Peace and welcome to Atlantis Build Talk Radio, the premier station for 5% of Nation of Gods and Earth social commentary, interviews, musicology, and uncensored discussions about the science of everything in life. This station is a subsidiary of Asia and the Atlantis School for Gifted Youngsters at www.atlantisschool.blogspot.com and Asia TV at YouTube slash Quanaya. Q-U-A-N-A-A-H. Peace and welcome to another edition of Atlantis Build Talk Radio. I'm your host, Saladin Allah. And in today's episode, I wanted to build on today's mathematics and today's degree. Today being the 24th. And in Supreme Mathematics, 24 represents wisdom, culture. Now, when you're drawing it up, 2 and 4 equals 6, the same way that wisdom and culture manifest equality. So 24, wisdom, culture, is actually referenced into... So when you think about wisdom, culture, the wisdom within a culture or within one's way of life is recognized through all different people activities. So when you think about wisdom culture or the wisdom within a culture or one's way of life or one's people activities, wisdom or discernment, right discernment, is observable through all of a person's people activities. If you're looking at a person and you're watching how they define their diet, you can extract certain wisdom from the way that they live and how it impacts their quality of life. You may learn from one person that it may not be good to combine certain type of foods. Or you may learn from other people that it's best to drink water or fluids in the morning time and then eat solid foods later on. You may meet other people and you learn from them that you shouldn't eat heavy meals compounded one after the other and it's good to practice caloric restriction or intermittent fasting so there's various different things that you can learn from a person in terms of wisdom that you can extract when it comes to just diet and that's just one form of a person's people activities related to their culture exact same thing you can learn in a person's language there's certain indigenous languages that don't even have a word or a concept for maybe or probably or i might That concept doesn't even exist in some indigenous languages, which means you're either going to do something or you're not going to do something. When you look at the English language, most of the words that comprise the English language originate from other different languages. So English is really like a hodgepodge of various different languages. And the meaning of those words in English when you follow their etymology, may have an entirely different meaning when you put it within the context of English as opposed to where it originated from. So, for example, you look at the word scientist or science. That's a Latin root for sire, which means to know or to have knowledge. Now, when children are taught about being a scientist, they're not necessarily taught the etymological perspective of what a scientist is. They're not necessarily taught that this is a person who has dedicated their life to knowing. So in their mind, they may think in order to be a scientist, you just got to have a laboratory pouring potions from one beaker to the next. Not realizing that a child by nature is a natural scientist of life. When you're looking at it from its etymological perspective. So when you assess various different people activities, whether it is diet, whether it is child rearing whether it is the type of style of dress or the regalia that people wear their language or any aspect of their people activities you can always extract wisdom or see how over time they learn various different ways in those people activities that were sustainable that stood the test of time and were the wisest approach towards being able to maintain the continuity of their people So now wisdom culture manifests equality. And that's exactly what I mean. That sustainability, that continuity, 
that longevity represents equality or balance or homeostasis. It doesn't matter what culture it actually is. You always have to find what is the wisdom in this culture. And if there is no wisdom in that culture, you'll always see how long it actually lasted. It's going to have a said birth record to it. Look at some of the different activities that people have engaged in in the past. You look at the Greeks. You look at the Romans. You look at present-day Americans, and you look at how long we're able to last or sustain ourselves or to maintain the continuity of our families and our communities based upon what we do. And if we don't last long, it goes back to, was that the wisest people activity to involve ourselves in? You will always come to the conclusion that certain decisions that we have made in the past and certain decisions that we make presently may not be the wisest decisions as it relates to our culture. The 24th letter in our alphabet is X, and that represents the unknown. So wisdom culture or the wisdom that you can extract from a culture is oftentimes just simply unknown by everyday people. A lot of people have been socialized and indoctrinated never to really explore or to look through the lens of wisdom at various different cultures, especially people who have been made here in the wilderness of North America. A lot of people who call themselves and define themselves as American, not all, have this arrogant chip on their shoulder as if they're above everyone else. As if they represent the first world or they are a so-called superpower. Consequently, some of these people begin to minimize or to look down upon various different other societies as if they're not as good or equal to them. So in the process, a lot of people may not really have a very accurate assessment and value for the culture of other people. It's kind of like when people immigrate here to America, they're taught either overtly or covertly to check your culture and your nationality at the door. We're all Americans, right? And a lot of times people don't really feel comfortable sharing their culture and embracing their culture. And if they do, they create their own insulated communities so you can go to any major city and see a chinatown or a haitian town or a greek town or an italian town or polish district or all of these various different segregated places because ultimately the diversity of what we actually bring to this country is not really celebrated we're told that it's a melting pot but it's really more like a salad it's diverse but you can see distinctly all of the various different aspects that make this country what it is and unfortunately it's not collectively celebrated this concept and idea of being american is considered the status quo and you have a lot of people who have been indoctrinated and socialized to believe that they need to aspire to that type of standard and the principles and values that naturally come along with that standard which of course was not primarily defined by black and brown people. So that wisdom culture, being able to extract the wisdom from various different cultures, requires a scientific approach. It requires an anthropological approach when it comes to striving to discover the beauty and the value of the various different ways of life that people live, especially black and brown people who represent the fathers and the mothers of civilization. We've been here the longest on this earth. And being here the longest, we had a chance to go through much more trial and error than everybody else. So being here the longest and still being present says something about our sense of sustainability, our longevity, and our perspective of homeostasis. The things that are required of us to maintain the continuity of not just our people, but the entire human family. There's a lot to learn from the fathers and the mothers of civilization. But again, that is unknown to many of us. So now if you relate that to the wisdom culture degree in the one of 36, because they were made blind, deaf and dumb when they were babies, that just echoes exactly what I meant about being socialized and indoctrinated. We've been learning to have this skew viewed of ourselves and of others in this world from the time of us being born. We learn it. All along our academic trajectory, we learn it through social media. We learn it through other different forms of media. We're constantly being bombarded with marketing and 
all these different type of ideas that represent the status quo that gives people a very limited perspective on not only who they are, but who others are in the process. So now wisdom culture or two and four, when you draw it up to equality and that equality represents what I meant in terms of sustainability and homeostasis and balance, the equality degree in the one to 14 to ask the question, why is the devil teach and keep our people illiterate? And it says, so he could use them for a tool and also as a slave. He keeps them blind to themselves so he can master them. Illiterate means ignorant. And again, that is just in reference to exactly what I'm speaking about. The reasoning for teaching and keeping people illiterate is so that the people who represent the status quo can maintain their dominance in terms of controlling the economy, the institutions, as well as the resources to make themselves rich off of our labor. So the process of socialization and indoctrination is for the purpose of teaching and keeping people illiterate so they could be used as a tool, also as a slave. We become blind to ourselves and mastered. In this degree, illiterate is defined as ignorance. Ignorance comes from the root word ignore. And if you're ignoring something, you're just simply not paying attention. And that's exactly what I mean about not taking the initiative to explore and to learn about various different other cultures, especially the cultures that contributed to this society by black and brown people. Ignoring that is linked to illiteracy, not being able to read, not only physically when it comes to reading books, but just being able to read people, being able to read your environment, being able to read nature, puts you in a very vulnerable situation when you don't have that sense of awareness. So that sense of awareness in action represents discernment, represents right judgment, AKA wisdom. So look at equality, break it down to three and three or understanding understood. The understanding understood degree or the 33rd degree in the one to 40s asks the question, what is a real devil? The answer is a grafted man, which is made weak or wicked or any live grafted germ from original is devil. So one of the things that that is showing you is that this system of socialization and indoctrination that's being perpetrated amongst all of the people, it's not being advocated or promoted by one person that will be considered a devil. Anybody can be a devil. Anybody could be in that position, striving to use people as tools and also as slaves and keeping them blind to themselves so they could be mastered. It doesn't matter their gender. It doesn't matter their nationality or their skin color. There are some people who advocate that type of system in order to keep themselves rich by the labor of other people. So how do you circumvent that? How do you navigate around that? It goes back to what I said fundamentally, wisdom, culture. Regardless of what era we're dealing with, you're still dealing with the same type of mindsets. Even though you may have technological advances today, the mindset and the mentality of some people is still the same. The same way that you have people who were devilish 200 years ago, you have the same people today. The same time you had people 300 years ago who were striving to use people as tools and as slaves and keeping them blind to themselves so they could be mastered, you have the same people who are doing it today. It's just a different era. It's a different technology being used. And the same way that our people were able to successfully circumvent that in the past, we can learn from the wisdom that they had in order to circumvent some of these same type of people of the present. If you think about some of the strategies that the Black Panther Party used in order to create a free breakfast program and other educational resources for our people, those resources enabled us to circumvent some of the various different things that the larger society was striving to do. Some of those resources are still important for us to be able to utilize today. Because the same way during that time you had children that didn't have access to those type of resources, you have the same children today who don't have access to those type of resources. The same way you had children being left behind back then, you have children being left behind today. And if we study and research some of the strategies that were used during that time, and even in earlier times, maybe in different societies, to deal with children being left behind, 
we can extract some wisdom from that culture and the solution won't be unknown to us. So there's many of us who are still walking around today that don't really have the knowledge of how to be solutionaries, how to be the answer to our own problems. So to conclude my build, today's mathematics is wisdom culture. So whenever you're striving to learn about wisdom within a culture or the various different elements of that culture, you have to take a scientific or anthropological approach. You have to explore those various different cultures and to ask yourself the questions, what type of people activities were sustainable? How did our people practice certain type of diets? And I'm talking about researching societies all around the globe in different eras. How did we approach diet? What was sustainable about the way that we practiced our dietary habits when it comes to that people activity or that element of culture? Was it sustainable? Did it enable us to maintain the continuity of our people? Was it environmentally safe? Did it enhance our quality of life? Did it affect our mental health? What impact did it have on the way in which we reared our children? All of those type of questions are important to ask when you're striving to assess the people activities or the culture of people around the globe. Because that is the way that you can extract the wisdom. The reason this is important is because, generally speaking, this type of approach is unknown. As I mentioned in our Supreme Alphabet, the 24th letter is X, unknown. Because we've been socialized and indoctrinated since childhood not to look at things from a healthy perspective, especially if we represent the so-called minority segment of a population. We've been taught to be other than ourselves. And in turn, that affects our sense of balance, our sense of homeostasis, our sense of equality and equity. And again, that is because the dominant society wants to use us as tools and as slaves, keeping us blind to ourselves and mastered. And the way that we can circumvent this is we have to take a scientific and anthropological approach towards culture and learn to extract the wisdom because that wisdom will allow us to rightly discern how not to be used as a tool and also as a slave or master. I will, this was inspiring, it was empowering, it was educational. It just gave those of you a quick perspective on how I see today's mathematics. Peace. Around the midtown, nuggets and the Jersey boys. Around timeout, second ward and pencil. Went to the PNL. Please support and share with your networks our Atlantis School Renovation Project. Through a recently acquired property here in the city of Niagara Falls, New York, we are doing renovations to establish an early childhood learning center and after school program for youth in our city. Despite students of color representing more than half the student population in this country, black men represent less than 2% of that teacher workforce. So as a black educator, my voice and presence within the lives of children is critical to combating family dysfunction, juvenile delinquency, and creating an inclusive workforce that ensures that all of our nation's students receive a quality, culturally enriched education, which consists of various projects, programs, and initiatives such as this cool animation series. This is not simply my profession. It is also my passion and my purpose. We would really appreciate your support and sharing this initiative with your networks. Thank you.